My talk today is estrogen dominance, its role in cortisol, weight management, and hypothyroidism. And you'll see that all of these are related together. This is not an entity from one individual that actually doesn't have any impact on anything else. And I'll show you how this all works. Um, this is me. I've actually been, been doing this for 15 years, mostly naturopathic medicine. And it's this, all of us actually use, with your, with your disc and your, your, your growth, all your things that you have, pick up a little bit at a time because there's a lot of things that you'll learn, but nobody has all the answers, and you're not going to learn all this at, in one session. So look at your references, look at your bibliography, print your articles, and actually just grow slowly, and your knowledge base will just amass in, in a really clean fashion. Estrogen dominance may explain many of the conditions confronting Western medicine in women, such as increasing early menstruation, fibrocystic breast, cancer, perimenopausal women are especially at risk because this is a key point. Progesterone typically declines more rapidly than estrogen because this is a key, key point for estrogen dominance because it's the balance of the scales that is the really important. I'm going to go over that. When we actually do this whole thing for estrogen, thyroid, cortisol, I'm going to give you a detailed insight into their beautiful relationship of how they all fit together because a lot of the terms you heard today were SHBG, TBG, so we're going to actually pull that together for you so you can un understand what those words really mean and have an impact for you so you know what to test for. And when you actually have estrogen dominance, it is a devastating condition to have because it causes so many symptoms, weight gain, bloating, there's a whole list I'll show you. So we're going to show you how three things today. We're going to show insights into how estrogen and its dominance fits into this picture. We're going to give you common symptoms of estrogen dominance. And then I'm going to give you recommendation interventions for how you can shortcut this entire thing or all the choices that you have using supplements, herbs, vitamins, lifestyle. Um, basic and simple. And so your patients actually need the, the advice you're going to get for patient care. Estrogen is present in almost every body tissue. There are receptor sites in the brain, the liver, the bones, the uterus, bladder, skin, breast, blood vessels. Estrogen is everywhere, so receptor sites are everywhere. We all know that there's three estrogens, and we're going to go back to this slide here, which actually at the bottom of the pointer here, we're going to focus pretty much right here on this slide, and we'll go back to, to um, estrone, estradiol, and estriol. E1, E2, E3. Different properties and amounts that vary by age. Estradiol is the most active and the most powerful. Estradiol is convertible to estrone. And vice versa. So it goes back and forth. So if you actually do your blood testing for levels, get an estradiol level because that's going to tell you most of what you need to know because if you try to target E1, E2, E3 individually, it's not going to be as specific for you and cost your patient more money. Both um, estradiol is a thousand times more stimulating to cell growth in the breast compared to estriol. Estriol is your pregnancy hormone and metabolite. You need a very good liver and you need good quantities of B6 to actually allow the conversion of your estradiol to your estriol. Estriol is made in the pregnancy and the placenta, and it's the largest circulating estrogen in the average woman's body. And, and this whole thing shows the interconversion of all the hormones together. One of the tissues, we'll first talk about estrone. Estrone, as you see, converts also to estradiol. Estrone is one of the tissues that can, that can make estrogen is adipose tissue. This is, comes from androstenedione that's made in the stroma of the fat cells. So fat cells make estrogen. When your body senses the need for estrogen because of estrogen dominance or lack of, it may call upon fat cells to produce it. So think of all fat cells as estrogen-producing tumors. Your fat cells will enlarge until you have enough of them to produce the estrogen that your body is asking for. There's two theories on fat cell size. 
one that you're born with, one that the cells can get bigger by a thousand times. Estrogen dominance, this is what it is. It actually shows up as irritability, depression, irregular periods, heavy menses, lack of progesterone, water retention, bloating, edema, water retention, sleep disturbances, cortisol, headaches, fluid retention, fatigue, short-term memory loss, cortisol toxicity, weight gain, craving for sweets, magnesium chromium deficiencies, uterine fibroids, estrogen dominance this is the one we normally see most of the time, breast swelling, fibrocystic breast, and PMS. So we're covering the waterfront with just one topic. What are the causes of estrogen dominance? All these things can cause estrogen dominance. Insulin resistance, trans fat intake, chronic stress, sleep deprivation, fluoridated water, xenoestrogens, that's a whole separate talk that goes into your plastics, your PCB, cigarette smoking causing toxicity, inflammation, zinc deficiency is the decrease in ability of the hormones to metabolize to testosterone properly, testosterone converts to estrogen. Lifestyle, cadmium, good exercise, hypothyroidism, and testosterone deficiency. The effects of the estrogen dominance is that it puts a lock on your weight loss. And here's how it does it. It triggers inflammation, so estrogen actually triggers cortisol. Estradiol is the rate limiting step for the, for the manufacture of cortisol, and cortisol acts backwards and does the exact same thing. So every time you think of estrogen, you need to always think at the same time, estrogen is synonymous with cortisol. This triggers inflammation, which binds to sex hormone binding globulin. High estrogen, high SHBG. Now this is a very important hormone to measure because you want to know how much SHBG is in that person's blood. SHBG, as you heard this morning, binds up all your hormones. Sex binding hormone globulin. You heard this morning already that testosterone is only 2% active to be free to do all the things that it needs to do. So if you have all your hormones tied up, it means you're going to have your thyroid tied up, your testosterone tied up. So estrogen acts like a pig and actually ties up all of your receptor sites, like going to a parking lot and looking for a parking space for another hormone. There's no space. It ties up thyroid binding globulin. So if you have estrogen dominance, you're going to actually have hypothyroid condition because thyroid binding globulin inactivates your thyroid, which lowers your metabolism, which actually allows you to have more estrogen dominance. So you're caught up in a catch-22 cycle where you can't get out of it unless you break the cycle. 